Well, hello, my little beauties. It's David Connolly here, the web developer extraordinaire. Last week, I asked the question, are frameworks making you a weak web developer? And I gave you folks a little challenge, a little practical challenge that we'll come to in a second. And I was interested to see how you guys would go about solving a real world problem. The kind of thing that commercial developers, who are any good at least, deal with all the time. I'm going to go through all of your answers right now, and let's see how you got on, and more importantly, what this means. Alright kids, so here's last week's video, and as you can see, I'm still wearing my trademark Man from Del Monte jacket. And uh, here's my video, and I gave you folks a little challenge, and it was to do with... Um, a car website and I was explaining that people can choose a make and model you remember all of this stuff and then a vehicle type and then I explained how this would bring up a bunch of results with various filters um, and that would bring up the results very quickly and I was asking how would you guys do that I showed you guys uh, some tables from a large database that are used to do this and I just put it out there now let me say folks to anyone who responded, thank you, I'm very impressed. There's no question that my question was a bit on the vague side. I was kind of not giving you guys the full picture and I wouldn't blame any of you if you just never responded. But a handful of you did respond and I can tell you in advance that all of those responses were intelligent. Nobody said anything stupid and if you're one of the folks who responded, there is nothing to be embarrassed about. I am grateful. But I'm going to go through those responses right now, very quickly, mind you, and let's see what we have. So, what have I got here? Ah, oh, man. Right. Where's my comments? Um, <laughs> all these things popping up, videos. Right, okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. So, um, right. I'm not sure if that's a... Yeah, that's a joke. Okay, so the first serious reply that came in was from Mark Smith. And Mark Smith said, Here's a wild stab in the dark. He says, Make a relational base with its tables created from the CSV files and link each table using its respective key. Okay, good. I agree. Next. Create indexes on the data tables and update the indexes whenever data is changed. Well, create indexes on the data tables is awesome. Um, I'm not familiar with a need to update when the data is changed, but this is fantastic. In fact, this may be um, perhaps, maybe the, probably the best suggestion of the bunch. In fact, I can tell you folks, I was top of Google for about five years for the phrase website repairs. I fixed hundreds and hundreds of websites. And if I sound depressed, it's because I've just realized I've got another one that I need to fix. And I can tell you that if anyone ever approaches you with a slow database, then nine out of 10 times creating an index, which is really just a click, you go into PHP, my admin, click the column, make index, blah, blah, blah. Nine out of 10 times, that will solve it. So well done, Mark, excellent suggestion. Then it all goes a bit complicated. Create a REST API to do with sending queries, receiving data, forgive me if I'm skimming. Use something like memcache to sit between the database and run cache queries so they'll run again. Run it up, run. Ah, I see what you're saying, okay. So effectively cache the results. Create skip scripts that run through the API and execute common search queries to initially build or rebuild the memcache data. Uh, blah, 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 blah. That's not too bad, Mark. Not too bad. However, it's the wrong answer. That's right, it's the wrong answer. Remember when I was saying that this indexes thing works on 9 out of 10 databases? It doesn't work on this one. The database is far too big. And in fact, if you want, Mark, you can contact me and I'll do a video of me doing your response and you'll see the thing just crashes. Unfortunately, creating indexes is nice up to a point, but when you go past about 200,000 rows, it just doesn't do the job. As for the vibe of caching, well, I think someone else mentioned that, um, 
and I'll maybe talk about that a little bit later, but not a bad answer, and even though it was the wrong answer, I think it was probably the best answer. It was really, really good. There was another really good answer, though. Uh, okay, and the rest is all complicated. <laughs> right, here we go. Uh, I think a few other people like that, actually. Uh, oh, Johnny got involved from the Insider Club. Uh, what about changing the data to many, many tables? Rebuilding indexes are rather dangerous. Okay, okay, enjoy your conversation, and I'm not getting involved. Right, I don't know how this, presumably you're going to have to put them onto a server, then access them through an API. Uh, ra, 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 ra. Perhaps Cache, there we are again, folks. Cache, some popular queries, okay. There's another one for the Cache, two Caches. I hope I'm going quick enough for you folks here. Uh, I know you see, I, okay, I love it when people laugh at their own jokes. I, I do that myself. <laughs> anyway, thank you very much for that. Um, Evan says, select the first, th first 30 rows, and when the user clicks the next page, retrieve the next 30. Right, this was the second best answer. In fact, this kind of gets, I'm tempted to give this joint first place with Mark, because that is an excellent suggestion. It kind of reminds me of the way that Firebase works, you know? They don't do pagination and stuff with the real-time thing, and, you know, they have all these bizarre workarounds along these lines. And yes, the idea of limiting the results does indeed make the thing much, much quicker. And indeed, probably um, about nine times out of ten, that would have worked. Unfortunately, you know what I'm going to say, with this particular database, well over a million rows, if you count all of the stuff joined together, I can tell you, Evan, I have limited to one row. I tried your answer with one row, never mind 31. And you know what happened? The whole server crashed. Unfortunately, the database is too big. Now again, you can contact me privately and I'll make a video showing you that happening. It was a nice attempt and you should be proud, but I'm afraid no cigar. All right, let's have a look at Fritz here. He's always leaving good comments and I appreciate that. Let's see, import the CSVs onto a DB, change some column names, set up some DB relations, indexes, okay, that's uh, good, okay, so far we're good. Oh dear, there it is, create a Laravel <laughs> project and create DB models out of the tables. Create an API to interact, and isn't it, isn't it funny how as soon as that word Laravel appears, you know that there is Shit, ahoy, you know? <laughs> it's like, we, okay, let's go. Create an API to interact, blah, blah, blah. Set up Redis. Yes, to ca uh, Redis cache in to get up to speed. Depending on the user base, consider setting up load balancing. Oh, you marvel of modern day science. You're catching me out. Test out and deploy. Mustn't forget our unit tests, children. Remember what Uncle Bob was saying? All that bullshit. Well, it was bullshit. While doing all of this, I should probably explain why and how Laravel will make my life a lot easier during a project like this. I can use database relations easily with some help of eloquent models. Reddit caching is easy to implement, and we're building an API we can set up rate limiting, blah, 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 blah. Okay, it's time we had an honest conversation about Laravel. I'm going on front of the camera. Ladies and gentlemen, Laravel is bullshit. Now I could go into all the reasons why Laravel is bullshit, and I may do that in a future video. But very quickly, there are two reasons why Laravel, no, 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 let's make it three. Here are three reasons why Laravel is bullshit. Reason number one, Laravel is a poor man's attempt to have PHP doing something that PHP was never meant to do. Let me help you out, ladies and gentlemen. PHP does not need template engines. PHP does not need to do an impersonation of Django or Ruby on Rails. I've been in this game 22 years and have never had a need for template engines migrations, or any of that other crap, okay? There is no technical need. 
Reason number two. Laravel is the slowest, do you hear me people? The slowest of every major PHP framework. And all the benchmarks, the results are clear. Laravel is slow. Now, if you are a commercial web developer, I've told you, I've told you people before, nine out of 10 clients want SEO. They want to get to the top of Google. And the thing that's gonna get them to the top is fast loading pages. If you use Laravel, you've just shot yourself in the foot. Okay, now, reason number three. How many times have I told you folks, I've worked on hundreds, maybe thousands of websites. And let me tell you folks, I don't like WordPress or Drupal. It's just a personal thing. But I have worked on WordPress and Drupal websites that are fantastic. The code is awesome, the, the way the modules work and all that, and I'm really impressed. I've worked on stuff that is, I mean, pretty much every PHP technology you can imagine, and a bunch of JavaScript stuff and more, this guy has worked on it. And I get to see what people are doing out there in the community. I've seen great developers using rubbish frameworks, and I've seen great frameworks being used by rubbish developers. I can tell you in all sincerity, the Laravel developers are the worst that I've ever come across. Whenever I go to a job and the developer gets introduced and it's a Laravel developer, do you know what I immediately think? I immediately go, ah. Oh. And the reason why is because somebody's getting fired. Do you hear me, Fritz? I'm going to go closer for you, Fritz. Somebody is getting their ass fired. I know it every single time. Because when I look at the work that Laravel developers are doing, and I don't know what they're teaching their folks, but it's crap. Their stuff is garbage. The pages load slowly. The productivity levels are slower than anywhere else in the whole web development community. Errors galore, bullshit galore, useless. Funnily enough, the guy who was working on this site for nine months before me was a Laravel guy. And I'm not going to go bad mouthing him because he's not here. But let me tell you something. To state the positive, the people who have hired me are so glad that they have me on board. And any time you see people talking about how Laravel is better than, let's say, Codeigniter, because it has more fancy features, you can tell them from me that it's bullshit. Let's move on. All right, now, um, apart from the Laravel stuff, uh, you did mention caching, and it's uh, another time when that's came up. And it's not a bad idea, but uh, I'm not into caching too much, and I'll come on to that in a second. Um, check this out. You're an odd guy, but I like you. Okay. There we go, folks. That Welcome to compliments of the 21st century. Anyway. <laughs> he actually took my own response really well. Check it out. <laughs> Thank you, Casey, for taking my shit. I appreciate that. <laughs> okay. I just want to know. Was that loading the front end made using Angular? No, it was, used, uh, it was made using Angular JS. Uh, okay, I'd like to use where statements to filter table joins. Uh, I think uh, for large large data, might be good to use a table type that's optimized for fast access. Uh, like uh, okay, good luck. Thank you very much. Good luck with that. Here comes Alan. Uh, you've said. Now that you don't like Angular, are you using something else in this project like Node? Now that's an interesting comment because isn't it interesting the amount of people who point towards a technology as the solution? Look at the amount of people who do this. And Alan's awesome. I mean, I appreciate Alan, intelligent guy. Um, and I appreciate Alan, but 
It's interesting. I, I think Query the first then saved to a JSON file. Same thing. Use a technology. Here's another one. I would think about doing loopback. Yay! And what everybody's doing, do you see the pattern, folks? Everybody's saying, hey! And they're waving a little flag. Maybe one that says loopback or Redis or something else, you know. Um, I use Angular and loopback. And what's clear, I say this respectfully, you people clearly don't know too much about database development. You know, there's just not much of a nice way to say that. But hang tough and we'll continue. In this video, you sound uncool. Okay, well, at least I sound unlike you. The voice of dissent in your silence. Anyway, I probably use MySQL joins to create a single table. Okay, I thought that might come up, actually. Export as a JSON and insert into... Do you remember I was talking about people just throwing these fancy technology names? Elasticsearch! We've had Lookback, we've had Redis, we've had all sorts of fancy things, Laravel. This one is Elasticsearch. Yes! And there we go. And that was pretty much it, I think. I hope I've not missed anything. And uh, here's Code Ignite. What's his name? Coding Phase. Still doing his thing. And um, reminding us. Who's this little... Bastard's been following me around. Anyway, you were all wrong, and I'm going to show you the solution. Oh, before I forget, for all you cashing rock and rollers out there who are talking about cashing the results, some of you folks with very fancy names and technologies and whatnot, um, there are a couple of problems with cashing. One is that in this, you now you never had a way of knowing this but in this particular industry there are often red hot deals that appear and they're up for an hour or two and then they have to go down for example there was a time i remember when the phone went and somebody was selling a bunch of new mercedes benzes for 200 a month and they went like that and you had to be really quick you know so these prices and all of that have to be live and the cashing vibe doesn't kind of sit too good with that stuff. Also, well, I don't think cashing is necessary, believe it or not. I think that there is a much easier way to do this. So stay cool and watch how easy the solution is and none of you folks got this. This is just outrageous, but check this out. All right, so on the original challenge, I showed you folks a bunch of database tables and clearly we're gonna have to have some way of combining or joining this data, right? I think we can all see that, we can all agree on that. The question is how? Um, do we make it all into one big table? Do we do some kind of elaborate table join, caching, limiting results? The suggestions were actually all pretty intelligent to be honest but none of you folks got this. So let me show you uh, a very, very easy thing and we'll see what you think. Okay, I'm gonna make a bunch of test tables here. We'll call one test users, right? Okay, I'm gonna make another couple of tables. Let's do uh, one something like this. And let's have one more table just for the road. Let's have one called um, user, what, what do you reckon? User cities, something like that, right? All right, so we've got three tables. Um, I've called them, oh geez, what on earth did I call them? User cities, test users, and something else, right? So I'm gonna now add some data into these three tables. So for test cities, I'll say that the city is Glasgow and the user ID is one. So I'm just populating the stuff, right? All right, now don't worry if the whole thing's a bit fast. All I'm doing is I'm making three very simple tables. Here they are, we got user cities, we have test users, we have um, test countries, right? We've got three very normal tables and they're linked up something like this, okay? And we can make our table join. We can select the stuff that we want. 
and we can run a little query on Navicat. Here we are, um, and we can even see something like where user ID is one, for example. So I can see where test uh, users, how about dot ID equals one, right? So we've made up a nice table join. Here's the result, and no surprises. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a table join, and you folks know this. You folks were talking about this, and congratulations, that is nice. Now, what I've been saying is that table joins crash the server. I can send you a video and show you if you want, but if you're dealing with millions of rows, they just don't work. Um, same with limiting results, it's going to crash the server. Again, you may ask, I'll send you the video, I don't care. But there's another little database trick that you can do. And it's so complicated that I may need a full one minute to show you this. So check this out. I'm going to click on this thing called view up here and I'm going to create a thing called a new view. A new what? I said a new view. I'm going to go to this view builder actually and stay cool because look, I'm grabbing the same stuff. Here comes the test users, here comes the test countries, and here comes the user cities. Look, ladies and gentlemen, it's exactly the three tables that we had before. But check this out. We can join them up like that. No surprises, right? This is all standard stuff, folks. We can say give us exactly the same rows, you know. Here we go, we'll have the country name, the city. Man, let's even have the test user ID, why not, okay? So we've now created a join, right? No big deal, but now I'm gonna say save as, and I'll call this user underscore info. I have now created a database view, not a view file that's to do with MVC, forget all of that stuff. This is a database view. I have named the view, user info and now if i go to a little tab on the database here and i do something like select all from user info and let's do where id equals one let's say where id equals one and then we run that then look immediately the results come in behold all of the information is there and yes it is behaving like a normal database table. We have effectively combined all of the database tables in a way that's easy, effortless, and very, very quick. This is not a table join. This is not some cheap workaround. This is a database view, and these things are like bullets. You can even add indexes and make them even faster, but it's so fast that you don't even need to do that, even if there's millions of rows. Okay, so there's your solution, really, really easy. So let's just remind ourselves what just happened. This channel of mine's not very big. I've got about six and a half thousand subscribers, something like that. And about 500 presumably developers watched the challenge. Some of you took part, I'm grateful. And not one of you folks could solve the problem. You were all intelligent. You were all hardworking and everything. And some of you folks know about things that I've got no clue about. I don't know about Redis, Memcache and all of that. I don't know about any of that stuff. Your intelligence is not in question. But here's the thing. If you are going out to a real job in the marketplace, let's say you're going into some large corporation and they've hired you, and you're building this crap, just look at how complicated some of those answers were, right? And you're maybe spending, who knows, a couple of days on it, and the thing's going really, really slow. And you're saying to them, well, you know, if it, the price changes, you're going to have to phone me or something because it's cached. And you're doing all this complicated crap. And then one day, they call the web developer extraordinaire. You know what's going to happen? I'm going to go in there, and in five minutes, I'm going to fix everything. I'm going to have it working. And they're going to think I'm a genius. Then they're going to fire you, and they're going to give me a share of the company. That's what's going to happen out there in the real world. I'm not saying that frameworks are bad or anything. I think they're good. 
But if you're spending your time learning pointless framework rewrites, figuring out how to do crud, holy cow, did we not figure this out 20 years ago? Why are we still doing this? It's time to move on and it's time to stop waving the flags of these new frameworks and technologies. Look at the amount of answers that said, use this, ding, 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 use that, ding, ding, ding. And they, they don't understand core technologies. So now you've heard it and now you know. You should stand by this guy. It's interesting, as I was doing the video, I think flashed up watch coding phase, you know, the next video on the list. And uh, Coding Phase is all right, but the last time I looked at Coding Phase's channel about five days ago, I was like, I wonder what he's talking about. He was talking about, hey guys, it's time to stop using React because Polymer is the new framework. Yay! And whenever I look around the web development community at the other YouTubers, there's two things that I see. One, adverts. They're all doing adverts. There ain't no adverts here, folks. I don't want the money, I don't need it. The other thing I'm seeing is a never-ending peddling of the next big framework, and it's all bullshit. Yes, they could come in and make me look like an idiot if they spoke about all of the fancy features of the new framework and all of that stuff, but put me on a job with any one of those jokers, and I'm telling you right now, I'm gonna run rings around them, okay? I'm tired of being humble. You people need some tough love. Do you think it was a fluke? Do you think I just plucked something out of random, the, the ether, and I was lucky? No, 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 no. I could sit here night after night and I could give you challenges and none of you folks would get it. So you listen and you listen good. It's time to resolve that. See all of those other developers you're following? Unsubscribe. Unsubscribe because they're leading you to lands of bullshit. This is the guy that you want to be listening to and fuck the rest. Now forgive me if all of this seems a little less mild-mannered than what you are used to. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen, I made a decision. I decided that my time and your time is too important to fuck around. Every single tutorial that I have posted on YouTube, and there are about 300 of them, they're all bullshit. It's time for us to change our ways. I've made the decision. I'm no longer willing to start doing... Do, do you not think I realised that I could chuck an Angular... I could chuck an Angular course or loop back or something else. I could chuck it on Udemy tonight and probably get $11,000. I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to do it. This is the channel where you get the good information. I respect you too much to go down that road of dishing out bullshit. So I'm not gonna hang about like Steph Mischuk saying, should you learn Swift or Kotlin or some crap like that? I'm not gonna be that guy. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna come back here on Tuesday, that's right, Tuesday, I'm gonna meet you here, and I'm gonna tell you how you can make a friggin' fortune with just a handful of very, very simple web development skills. These are techniques that I used in 2010 that were bringing in, I don't know if I should say this, you'll probably not believe me, but if you do the per minute calculation, I was making approximately $6,000 per minute. Yes, yes. So if you would like to make $6,000 per minute, come here on Tuesday. Oh, oh, is that the sound of somebody selling? Yes, it is, but that's okay. Most of you losers can't afford anything anyway, but that's cool. Hang out, learn some stuff, and feel the vibes. This is the channel where we move forward. I'll catch you on Tuesday.